now I've come to check on the sharks and test the water so we can look at introducing more animals. So they're actually looking very good and very happy. So the protein skimmer is working very well. As that froth at the top turns yellow, we need the yellow froth to come out. Um, if it is white, we need the white to stay inside the column. Because what the protein skimmer does is suck water out of the bottom, introduce the water to billions of air particles, the organics and the waste from the sharks bond with the oxygen and come up. So the clean water goes out the bottom and the shark waste goes up and gets caught in this cup. So it's working quite well. And once that turns yellow, I want the yellow to come out. So the salt level is currently 0.025, which is a very good level for the sharks. But because we're gonna bring a fish in today, I'm just gonna drop the salt level a little bit because I'd really want it right now more like 0.024, if not 0.023, just to bring in the grover. Now over time, the salt is going to concentrate because over time, the water is going to evaporate. And if the water evaporates, that means that the salt level will go up. So I need to regularly add some fresh water because that fresh water will ensure that the um, salinity doesn't go up too much. Now, if you want to keep sharks the very most important thing is that you have a good protein skimmer because fish admit ammonia, which breaks down into nitrite, which breaks down into nitrate, which the good bacteria in all this media has a very good chance of breaking down. But sharks and stingrays, which are cartilaginous animals, not bony animals, actually admit urea, which is a much higher level of waste and the urea is most effectively removed through a protein skimmer because the biological processes of the urea or the breakdown of urea is not as effective. So now what I'm gonna do is test up the water and find out what all the levels are like. Now the test results are the pH is about seven eight, so slightly low. So what I'll do is add some coral rubble to the bottom of this pond in the hope that that will help to keep up the pH. The KH is 7, which I'm very happy with. That means it's unlikely that this pH is going to plummet down because there'll be plenty of buffering capacity in the um, KH. If the KH was low, then I'd be worried about the pH dropping out, but with a high KH, it's unlikely that the, um, K, that the pH is just going to drop out. Now I've got basically no ammonia in the water, which means I'm safe to raise the pH. Never raise pH if you've got ammonia, otherwise you make the ammonia more toxic. Then um, we've got basically no nitrate and basically no nitrite. So the water's in very good stead. And I need to add a bit of water ager because um, we've added a little bit of tap water. No, I think they're eagles. There's a pair of sea eagles just there. Can you do that through here? Well, can you do that? No, it's not going to work, is it? They're right over the other side there, and from here they look massive. There they go. It is absolutely amazing how long it takes to drain. We've got a pump in there that we're pumping out and it's taken all day and we're only up to there. 
It's an unbelievable amount of time. We've got to factor in time to drain tanks when it's this big. So we've got the groper out now and um, trying to get the eels out. It's all happening. So the groper is now in the tub ready for transport. And I'm now filling up a tub in the back of my ute. This is the van actually to put the eel in. Because I found the eel very aggressive and I don't want it attacking the groper during the move. Chuck a couple of screws in that. Yep. Okay. Action. Action. Here's our big rubber reel. We just got him from Kmart. <laughs> Beautiful. Be free. Free Willy. Be free, Willy. Very cool. And a nice little cuddle, ready for their move. So this eel, his name's Gus, and I've had him for a very, 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 very long time. He's suffered many shark bites over the years and he's always all right. He's a tough thing. Bye, Bootler. So just to give you an idea, this grope is about four foot long and the eel is probably closer to five. Now in goes Mr. Eel. He's gonna be very happy in here. Out. Oh, got myself a shower. That was fun. As I was following the ute on the road on the way over here, the groper must have done a big flick and about 20 litres of water came flying out of this drum on the road like a tidal wave. It's pretty cool. Made that as hard as possible. Yeah. That's what they do. The old Callum would have done this by now. I'd just grab him if he wasn't so cranky. He's a very cranky eel, this one. The old Callum would have grabbed him. Move, 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 move. Steve Irwin would have got him. There is a net here, by the way. I think, oh, let's catch him in there. It's easy. Let's put his head in there. But you could just at least get him on the other side. Yeah, let him bite it. Hey, you do it and I'll just stand around videoing it. Is that a good idea? How yeah, about we all just stand around doing nothing? Good idea. I haven't you got him yet? I got him on the wrong side of the net. You know how a net works that way? I've got him the opposite to that. I'm going to try and get him around like that. And then I got him. Go on, buddy. Are you finding this arousing? It's like handling big man sausage. <laughs> Just like every day going to her piss. <laughs> <laughs> No, mine's more of a spiny eel. Alright, you want to film your eel going in the net? Yeah, look at that. Watch it. 
Okay. What do you uh, mean? Uh, you have list lost him. He went through the world's smallest gap. Well, that's what they do. Here we go, here we go. See? Monster his name is. Just like taking a whiz. It's like trying to get it in the porcelain bowl. Like a big snake. Big big wet trouser snake. Big wet trouser python. With two eyes. That bites. You're normally used to the one-eyed variety that don't bite. It might spit at you. The spitting cobra. A one-eyed spitting cobra. From the hide under. Give it seems. It, it seems like it does. No. Well, that was very successful. Just floating on. So, this eel was hiding out under here. And then, as soon as we put that eel in, this one chased that one out because this one, the honeycomb, is clearly dominant over the giant. Black tip's just checking everything out. And there's the groper there, settling in. And the black tip's really over there inquiring about the um, moray. And that pump just went off, which is interesting. Oh, he actually banged it, he banged it off. Um, fix that now. So I've just given the inside neck a bit of a clean on the protein skimmer. It's really important that every couple of days that's given a clean. Now the pH of the water is slightly low. Um, it's dropped just a tiny bit. So therefore I will um, buff that now. Just gonna chuck a kilo of this in there. So the pH will quickly come down in a situation like this. So it's important to keep the pH and KH up. And then we have added a little bit of tap water. So we add a tiny bit of water ager as well. This stuff's super strong. And if we get any ammonia or nitrite, we need this on hand to detoxify the ammonia and nitrite. So when a protein skimmer is set and the bubbles at the top are very white and some is still coming over to get co collected in the cup. That's called wet skimming. Now wet skimming is going to remove a lot more waste than dry skimming. Dry skimming is where the water level of the skimmer is gonna be lower, and then the white froth will stay inside the skimmer, and then only the colored froth comes out. If the colored froth that comes out is very dark, then that's very dry skimming. If um, it's yellow, then that's sort of standard skimming. If it's white, then it's wet skimming. In a situation like this, we want the skimmer running very wet, but that's assuming that we're able to um, clean it regularly because as it fills up, we need to be able to empty it. And that's a very big skimmer and it's very heavy. So emptying it is very fun. So all the animals are in here now, and they're all very happy. We've just moved the skimmer from there to there to make it a bit easier to clean, in reference to where we are. 
But another very successful day here on our shark relocation project. So now the sharks are all sorted, we can continue preparing the tank and then we gotta get the tank over here to reset it up and eventually get them back into their aquarium again. But in the meantime, I think they're very happy here and with lots of good biological media and with lots of filtration, I think that they'll be very happy and they won't be in a hurry to get into their, their aquarium again, but they'll be very happy when they're back into the aquarium. So the aquarium holds about double the amount of water as this, but um, the shape of this is um, very agreeable to the sharks. So where possible, rounder tanks are much better for sharks because um, they don't have to turn the sharp corners. But the tank that these are going in is almost two and a half meters wide, so it's still okay. So this will be a nice little holiday for the sharks. Something different for them.